All right, well, thanks everyone for coming this evening. This is our second open house for the uh, Highway 23 New London um, Access and Safety Assessment. My name is Leif Garnes. I'm the consultant project manager for this assessment. Uh, we would ask that um, as we go through our pre presentation tonight that any questions you might have, that you come find one of us with a name tag after the presentation by one of these boards or over here by the, the layout and we can um, either answer the question for you or make sure that we can find someone who can answer that question. So just wanted to recap the purpose of our work here um, as far as the safety assessment goes. Uh, we started this process back in uh, March of 2017 here and our initial efforts were to reach out to folks and understand what your concerns and priorities were for this corridor. So if you recall, it, or if you're at the original open house that we had, we, we took all this information in uh, and learned uh, what your concerns are as residents of New London here. Uh, we also met with various other focus groups, including the schools, we met with some business owners, we met with law enforcement and um, EMS to try to get an understanding from their perspective. But not only uh, meeting with folks, but we also uh, look at the uh, statistics and the technical data that we use to make decisions on uh, what improvements we recommend. So that process has been going on since March and tonight we're presenting our uh, preliminary recommendations from that um, work here with uh, the goal of wrapping this all up here um, very, very shortly. So uh, one item we did here as we went through our first round of engagement was that um, North Shore Drive was a, a major concern from intersection safety. So we first began our assessment looking at County Road 40 and Highway 23, Highway 9 and Highway 23, and 153rd Avenue and Highway 23. And based on that uh, feedback we received, we did add North Shore Drive to our work here to understand uh, potential improvements there as well. I should note that uh, throughout this process, um, our team here with SRF has been working with uh, Minnesota Department of Transportation, the City of New London, New London Township, and uh, Candy, Ohio, Candy Ohio County here um, to help uh, formulate a consensus here. So just wanted to talk through a few items that we heard through our initial process. Um, one of them we, we heard quite a bit was uh, travel speeds. And so we do have some information tonight to walk through um, how we set uh, posted speed limits and, and what does that mean for a corridor. Uh, we also heard a lot about traffic in general. So uh, during certain times of day, there are um, some, some wait times, especially during the school time. People are concerned about the amount of traffic and congestion that is experienced at some of these locations but also that um, not only do we have uh, New London residents, but we also have um, recreational users, people that come in the summertime that aren't always familiar with the area. Um, another item here is driver behavior. Uh, we did note that there is quite a range of people that drive this corridor. It can be anywhere from um, young age uh, school students to um, the older population. A few other items we heard here was um, anything that we do recommend, we wanna make sure that we account for what can happen in the future um, as New London grows, uh, particularly east and south of Highway 23. So we wanted to make sure that our recommendations uh, could account for a potential uh, fourth leg at, um, at Highway 9 where we would move uh, County Road 40 over for that. So we wanted to make sure that anything that we did did account for that and that it would not only be able to make it work but make sure that it would still be safe and not have congestion in the future. Intersection design, we did hear a lot about the wide median at Highway 9 and how it's inconsistent with the narrower median at County Road 40 versus the narrower medians as we work our way towards Spicer. Um, also, um, a couple of the intersections are particularly dark at night and they're, they're very difficult to see and there are some visibility concerns, not only picking out that intersection as you're on Highway 23, but also when you're on um, 153rd and North Shore trying to get onto Highway 23. And then, of course, we also got a lot of feedback on potential options um, on what we could do to address safety. Um, it ranged anywhere from um, constructing a, a roundabout to um, installing a traffic signal to putting in a J-turn. So essentially, we heard uh, a wide range of um, suggestions. I would also point out that we did get quite a bit of feedback on um, a couple of the intersections, particularly on the south end, with just the intersection lighting and having visibility concerns with those. All right, so one of the topics I mentioned here was uh, setting speed limits and, and how that um, correlates to, to speed limits on the corridor. Uh, probably the, the number one question we always get is, if we lower the posted speed limit, will that change how, people, how fast people drive? And what we find uh, throughout the state is that that is not always the case. And so uh, for us, we have to 
essentially set the speed limit on the corridor based on what it's designed for and what people drive it. So one thing to keep in mind here is that um, when we take a look at or when we get questions about that, we always talk about um, people drive the roadway the way they feel they should drive the roadway. So it's based on what it visually looks like to them, what they think it should be driving. Um, so we, that's essentially how we, we set our speed limits. We have three examples here of uh, different locations along Highway 23 at uh, three different speed limits. So the, the one on the top is a lower posted speed in Spicer. The one in the middle is um, just as you're entering or near 153rd. And then the one on the bottom is just by the country stop, just, east, or just south of Highway 9. And what we wanted to illustrate here is the differences in, in the visual of the corridor, whereas the, the lower speeds, we have a curb and gutter, we have buildings really close to the roadway, we have several access points that we have to account for, uh, whereas we start to, to transition to the bottom where we have a much wide open um, corridor. And so that's why uh, the speed, lift, speed limit differentials are there. And if you have more questions about this afterward, we do have uh, these two uh, boards in the back here that we can uh, spend more time talking about. All right, so we did take a look at uh, the historical crashes out here to understand what those patterns are and, and where uh, most of the crashes were occurring. Uh, so what we did here was take a look at the four intersections as part of our work um, with the intersection of Highway 9 having the most crashes over a five-year period. Um, I will note that uh, the most current data we have available to us is, is 2015, so if there has been a crash that you're aware of that has happened in the most recent year or two, it's not going to be illustrated on here. Just want to make that clear. Um, but one thing uh, to take away from these four locations is that a lot of the crashes have been similar, where they're your right angle or T-bone type crashes. So where we have the, the most severe crashes on a, on a roadway like this. So based on the, the information that we received from the public with the concerns that were uh, made, as well as the technical information, the first location we're going to focus on is, is Highway 9 and our recommendation for that location. So what we're recommending here is what we call a, re, a reduced conflict intersection, or uh, more commonly you would hear this as a, a J-turn intersection. So what's important about this intersection is that all of the movements can still be made, so um, you'll still be able to uh, get on Highway 23 and go north or south to St. Cloud and Spicer. <laughs> um, in the future, if County Road 40 does connect, you will be able to um, access that as well. Um, this does uh, provide a cost-effective solution for our corridor, knowing that not only do we have to uh, balance uh, New London residents, but also that there are other uh, regional users that use Highway 23, and we want to make sure that we balance that. And so. Uh, in this particular location, the J-turn was um, the alternative that rose to the top of our evaluation. So throughout the state, we have um, installed these J-turns as solutions for uh, similar safety concerns. And so uh, what we have here tonight, um, this is also on the board behind the screen here, um, is some more information on what we're finding throughout Minnesota and how these have improved safety. Uh, we did talk earlier about we are seeing a lot of those right angle crashes at these type of intersections, and these have been uh, proven to reduce those. We have seen that um, these have reduced uh, fatalities on these four lane divided roadways, um, but also um, not just fatalities, but injury related crashes. So the crashes, if they do occur, um, they're not as severe as they are today. Um, a couple of other benefits that we have noted here is that um, compared to some other types of solutions such as a, a traffic signal or a roundabout or an interchange, these can be built much quicker so they can be, a, they can address our safety issue um, as funding becomes available. Uh, another benefit here is just that with these um, solutions we're not uh, typically required to purchase right away to, to make it fit in the roadway. All right, so we wanted to talk a little bit here about some of the other solutions we looked at. Uh, on the boards back here, you can look at after we're done here, uh, some more information about these different solutions and what they would look like. But at Highway 9, we did take a look at um, what it would mean to install a roundabout. We took a look at what it would mean if we actually made the median wider to create more separation. We looked at, well, what if we put in a traffic signal and what would it take to do that? And then we also looked at, um, there's been a lot of history here with in a potential interchange. And so we looked at, well, what if we were to create some type of bridge um, improvement here into town. And so uh, these 
alternatives were removed from consideration through our, our process here. Um, from a roundabout standpoint, um, when we t it's a higher cost alternative. Uh, just with the wide meeting state, there's a lot of re reconstruction involved, but also when we're trying to balance all of the users of Highway 23, it is still a, a mobility <coughs> corridor, and so we want to make sure we maintain that. Um, as far as widening the median goes, uh, what we didn't see here was removing that confusion that we have today in the median, where cars are not sure whose turn it is and, and who gets to go first. So uh, we eliminated that, not only from the cost standpoint, but from uh, just not really addressing our concerns that we had. Uh, we did look at uh, a traffic signal. Um, in this instance, to, to put a traffic signal in, we would actually want to bring that median back in narrow again, which adds quite a bit of cost to our project here. But also what we see uh, with installing traffic signals in a, in a situation like this is we, we actually introduce some, some really severe uh, rear end crashes. Lastly, we did take a look at a bridge uh, flyover type improvement. And uh, what we found with that is um, it, quite a bit of a, a cost compared to our recommendation, but also the amount of impact it would have on property and, and, back, and access to the local businesses on Highway 9 in town. Our next location here is 153rd. Uh, we did look at a wide range of uh, alternatives here. Um, what we have recommended based on this process is uh, first taking a look at the ability to install intersection lighting. We heard a lot of visibility concerns with the intersection at night. We also um, have been working with the New London Township and they are planning to construct turn lanes in uh, 2018, I believe. So that was a, a recommendation that came from the team, which also coincided with what a current project that they have. Uh, but then also, uh, we did get a lot of feedback that as you're coming east on 153rd and you're trying to look back towards New London, that um, the sight lines are, are challenging. And so uh, we are uh, gonna take a look at what we can do there to clear those sight lines to improve the visibility. So a couple other options we looked at, again, these are illustrated on the, the graphics over here behind me, or behind the screen. Um, we did take a look at a, a reduced conflict intersection at um, 153rd as well as a roundabout. Again, these are, are quite impactful and quite costly improvements when we felt as a group that the uh, technical data was telling us that there are some lower cost, lower um, lesser impact alternatives such as the intersection lighting and, and turn lanes that would address some of the concerns today. Our last spot here is uh, North Shore Drive. Um, again, a recommendation from our assessment here is to install intersection lighting to help with the visibility, but also look for um, opportunities to improve the visibility when you're looking, um, when you're on North Shore Drive heading west looking towards Spicer. Uh, what that improvement is to uh, improve those sight lines, we're still um, defining that, but um, that is a recommendation from our team. And then similar to 153rd, we did look at a couple other options that are a little more impactful, quite a bit more cost. Um, just felt that with the, the type of crashes and the amount of crashes here that there are some lesser um, invasive improvements that can be done to address some concerns now. All right, so just where we go from here, uh, when we think of how a, a project gets built, so as soon as we open after a road construction project, um, it's quite a process to get there. So um, fr from our standpoint, we're right now we're in that planning stage, and so that's really identifying what that project is. Uh, where we go from here is use this information to help us identify funding sources to, to actually implement that project. And so uh, the most likely uh, funding source for this type of project is safety funding. And so that's something we will um, hopefully look into um, here in the very near future. Um, one thing we should note is depending on that funding, it could take a couple years yet to actually see construction happen at the Highway 9 intersection. The other locations where we've talked about intersection lighting, um, those things are just more items that we can work through with the, the township and with the county and with the DOT to understand how we can get those implemented. So that's what we have for you tonight here. Again, we really appreciate your time. We appreciate uh, you know, your participation throughout this process here. We'll be standing at the boards back here if you would like to ask more questions. Again, look for those of us with a name tag. We can either answer that question for you or we can direct you to, to someone who can. So again, thank you for your time and hopefully we get a chance to talk here afterward.